Coming up, we have your Las Vegas real estate market update, recapping the year 2023 and our predictions for the year ahead in 2024. Hey everyone, I'm Steve. And I'm Kristen. We are the Thomas Group with Real Broker, your local Las Vegas and Henderson Realtors. Really excited today to recap 2023, look at what's happening in the real estate market for 2024. Lots of really cool things happening in Las Vegas and in Henderson. And the real estate market in 2023 definitely had a, a couple of ups and downs, right? So mm -hmm. I guess like, where did we all end? Yeah, and stick around to the end as well because we are going to be talking about the luxury market mm. here, uh, which is very exciting. Yeah. So let's get into it, Stephen. The me. <laughs> I think I called Stephen when I'm in trouble. So you guys know. This I'm in is trouble. take five, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the median sales price of single-family homes um, ended the year at four hundred forty-nine thousand nine hundred dollars. Now that was up six <laughs> percent. That was up six percent from the previous year, uh, which is way more than we thought we'd be. Not more than I thought it would be. If, I think if we go back and look at last year's tape, you'll say I thought it was about 6%. Look. You said about three. three. Yeah. yeah. So, and know. then just to give you but some. But she is the boss, so listen to her. Yeah. yeah. Just to give you some reference as well. At our peak, we were at 482,000 in May of 2022. So we are only 32,000 away from our peak. 8% like something like that. Oh, yeah, you're way better at math than me. So let's look at condo and townhomes. We ended the year off at 270,000. That was up 9.3% from where we were last year, which is a lot, but condo and townhomes were really hit at the end of last year with the interest rates rising rapidly and people like freaking out. Putting on the brakes. Yeah. Exactly. And at their peak in May of 2022, condos and townhomes were at 285,000. So we're only $15,000 off, which sometimes we see the condo townhome market fluctuate that in a couple of months. So mm -hmm. personally, my predictions, again, I think we'll, we'll get back to that peak. What are you thinking that we'll see for sales price happening in 2024? I think the same as last year. 6%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, as much as, um, I love to be optimistic and my glass is always half full. I'd like interest rates to be down in the fives. I just don't see that happening. The inflation data that was recently released wasn't as favorable as everybody has been thinking and has been anticipating. I know that's not really exciting and cool and sexy or anything well, like that. Well, I think that, 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 like what I said as well, is not that much different. Like we're going to see a little bit of an increase, but we're not going to see 20%. No, I mean, we, 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 we should def, no, we, I mean, we won't. I, I, we, I just don't, just, you know, I just don't see, don't see that happening, but smart appreciation, like sensible appreciation, like that's, that's great for everybody. That's what we need. And we can definitely see the amount of interest for people that are still moving into Las Vegas and Henderson in all of the different markets, condo townhomes, luxury we'll talk about absolutely going bananas. But, but I think it's, again, like as we say that I say, I've said this before, it's still a very attractive place to live. It's still a place that people are really finding out about and going, whoa, I didn't know like Las Vegas was more than the strip or I didn't know there was all of these beautiful places out in Henderson and, and it had a community and blah, blah, blah. So yeah, sensible appreciation, I think for next year. And I do, I do think that it's going to be very segmented as well around town. I, th I definitely think there's going to be certain communities that will, that will switch between buyers and sellers markets. So it's mm -hmm. going to be very important to know for you guys, wherever you are, you know, buying, or if you're, you know, here in town looking at selling your home, like what's going on in your community. But yeah, that's guess, I guess my overall view. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. I mean, you, because you touched on interest rates, let's talk about that right mm. now. So personally, I think we're going to end up like around the low sixes. I've seen it several economists say that who so i'm just gonna go off of what they say that's my reasoning you have any thoughts where we'll end up with interest rates i think that's, i agree with you yeah yeah so unfortunately not down to fives like you said yeah. but but well having said that um you know with 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 seller concessions because the sellers that are have their homes on the market now and aren't able to sell them. There's a lot of them that are becoming like, the, although it's a seller's market, they're, they're, they're willing to give concessions. Yeah. And you can get your interest rate, you know, when you're in the sixes, brought down into the fives, possibly even the fours, you know, depending on programs and stuff. So if you anticipate interest rates dropping in the future, 
you know, you could take advantage of that now, refinance later, but I don't like to, you know, to gamble in that sense. I always say, just spend what you can afford right now. Don't anticipate it being less in the future because if it goes up, I mean, it's the sticky situation. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move on to closings. Um, so we're not going to talk about month over month or like comparing months. Let's just talk about year over year. So um, overall in the market, um, the, our total closings in 2023 were 18% below 2022. And this is the one bullet point where I think like people and news articles and stuff are making these inflammatory assumptions that yes, like sales are down, but there's so much more to the picture mm -hmm. than just the number of sales, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which we touched on a little bit already and we'll, we'll keep touching on now. Anything else to comment on there? Well, I mean, it's just demand, isn't it? Right? Like it's like, like, like well, supply and demand. Supply, exactly. It's supply, not, yeah. yeah, it's like. That, that, that's the whole thing. Like, like sales can be, can, can be low, but when you look at, if you're, let me ask you as you, as a homeowner, right? Someone ho homeowner here in town, do you care that the amount of sales decreased last year or do you, that your value of your home went up by 6%. Exactly, and same if you're a buyer, like how much do you have to pay for it? That's a really good way to put it. Love that, that's great. So pending sales, we ended the year with single family homes pretty much the same as the year before. Okay. Now, condo and townhomes were up 124%. What? Yeah. Well, because we remember we said when we were talking about the pricing as well, condo and townhomes were hit very, very hard at the end of 2022. Sales were down, prices were down. So at the end of 2023, we have over double the number of, of properties under contract. So very strong demand, I believe, headed into 2024. Has the, um, is the condo and town, townhomes inventory been increasing? Nope. And we will get to that right now. Okay. Okay, let's talk about inventory. So we ended the year with 3,766 single family homes available for sale, down 40% from the previous year. Condo and townhomes, down 20% from the previous year. So our inventory is just continuing to shrink. shrink. Now it's interesting, I've seen, you know, I've done a lot of reading on what economists say, and they're all predicting that we will be having more inventory in the coming year. Um, you know, maybe because some sellers that were feeling locked into their 3% interest rates, mm -hmm. maybe they're a little bit more willing to move for 6% versus a 7 or 8%. What do you think? No. Nope. When we look at the average amount of time an American stays in a home, it's, you know, between seven and nine years, we're anticipating that becoming longer, right? And when we look at when people were getting home loans at 3%, that was, you know, three years ago, four years ago in that sort of region, right? So we've still got another three or four years minimum, I think, until we start seeing those homeowners having to really evaluate their options. You know, like it's buying a home is not something that you do every day. It's like, well, let's move a house again. Let's move a house yeah. again, right? Like you stay there for a long time. So I just don't see a general, link. I'm not, don't see an increase in inventory. I think that's going to, you know, keep the market again, stable and have a similar year as last year. Yeah. I hope we get a little increase, but we'll see. Um, new listings on the single family home side were down 10.6%. Right on the condo and townhome side up 10.1 percent oh. so but i don't think the increase in in listings in the condo and townhome is enough to keep it's up. negligible yeah so, it's not yeah. enough to keep up with the the growing demand so let's talk about where that puts us in a buyer or seller market which you kind of already touched on we're for both of them pretty much we're at 2.5 months of inventory shrinking shrinking by 30 percent for 30 to 40 percent from the previous year <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Heavily favoring the sellers, heavily mm -hmm. favoring the sellers. It's weird though, because last year I felt like you could even get more seller concessions than this year. Almost last year. It was so weird because we're kind of at a standstill Gosh, in terms just, of, mm -hmm. in terms of sellers were being unrealistic. I think now sellers are a lot more realistic with their pricing. Whereas last year they weren't, they were stuck with the pricing too high. So they were giving more seller concessions to make up for the home being priced high. But I think, They've come to a realization on pricing. I, I you know what, I, I, I would agree that with you there. I think, I think the sellers are, are more realistic on their pricing, but buyers are not. 
Well, that leads us then into our months of inventory, which tells us if it's a buyer or seller's market. And for both condo and townhome, we're hovering right at about 2.5 months of inventory, um, which is down 35% from the previous year. So we're heavily favoring the sellers. Heavily, heavily favoring the sellers, yeah. And it's, you know, it's interesting. You were saying earlier that you feel it's, it's easier to get, it was easier to get seller concessions last year than it is now. Yeah, but I fe felt like last year sellers were more unrealistic on their pricing. Hmm. They were trying to price their homes mm -hmm. at the peak, the peak of last peak year. Price. So they were making up for, for how much they were overpriced by adding some seller concessions in. Mm. But now, I mean, you can, like, like you were saying before, you can still get seller concessions, um, but it's just not happening as much. And, and the, the most important thing is, listen, you guys, if you don't ask, you don't get. Yeah. Right. Like, like, don't sit out there, like, just listening to the, all this data and and maybe potentially missing out on, you know, purchasing a home. Like, you've got. Yeah, I, I always tell people you've got nothing to lose in writing an offer. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't you never have to purchase a house. You're not forced. Yeah. Right. Make an offer on and something. If it makes sense to you, makes sense to them, then you got a deal, right? Yeah. And one more thing I want to touch on too, because we have been talking about seller concessions and and all of our predictions is um, new construction. New construction as well, uh, they've really, really been pulling back on their concessions because they know there's hardly any inventory for you out there to pick from. So, I mean, I don't actually, I should have looked how many of our sales are new construction for the whole team, but I want to say we're at least at a third. Mm -hmm. I would say probably a third of our sales are new construction, which is way higher than it used to be. Um, and they're also increasing prices month over month. I mean, I've got clients that are waiting for lots and the price is going up and up and up. So that's its own kind of unique market. And also the luxury market. Yeah, the luxury market is, um, I think it's surprised everybody. Yeah, I think it has too. So doing very well here. Uh, overall, our closings are down 19% from 2022, which follows the, it's, it's pretty much spot on the same as the, as, um, the single family and condo and townhome, like the rest of the market. But here's where it gets interesting. Mm. And that is the ultra luxury market where we're talking about home sales over 5 million. So the, look, should we just clarify the luxury market million? Million plus, yeah. So that followed the trends of the rest of the market. Luxury market, 5 million plus. Ultra luxury market. Ultra luxury market, yes, 5 million plus. Um, 2022 had 44 sales, 2023 had 48 sales. So while the rest of the market was contracting, this part of the market was expanding, and this is only resales. So really where we're seeing a lot of our ultra luxury buyers buying is Ascaya and or, or Summit Club. They'll be looking at those two and those aren't even going to be showing up in this data because people are buying their lot and then building custom. Mm -hmm. So to me, to even see that increase as well. And I mean, it, we're it, seeing it personally in people yeah. that are reaching out to us. Mm -hmm. um, the, it, this demographic is very interested in moving here. I mean. Obviously, they love Las Vegas. It has a lot of pros. Biggest pro is the, the tax benefits well, for our clients. Kristen has, I think, this year alone, I mean, you correct me if I'm wrong, but you've probably got five clients with, a, I don't know, minimum of a $5 million budget, mm -hmm. like looking right now. So Kristen knows that market. She's in it. She's working with people. She can give you the scoop, give you the, get you deals and stuff. Um, so if you're looking at that market, definitely, uh, definitely reach out. Yeah, I'd love to help. All right, well, that's all I have. Do you have anything else to talk about? Oh, happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. We look forward to, to helping everybody this year. Oh, can we give ourselves, can I, can we, can, can I, can I like big us up a little bit? Sure, go for it. So we were just, we were just awarded with this, <laughs> which is we were, when I say we, this is just Kristen and I, not just including our team. We came in the top 2% of real estate agents in Clark County. That's not just mm -hmm. Las Vegas in Henderson in Boulder City. And I have to tell you, everyone on our team is an absolute killer as well. And they're all rock stars. Our team is built up of specialists. So whatever you're looking at doing, you know, whether it's buying or selling or building or investing, we've got somebody in our team that can help you. So we look forward to uh, getting into that top 1% with your help this year. So we thank everybody that reached out to us that continues to, to trust us. Uh, and we look forward to meeting those of you that we haven't yet met. 
and, um, and seeing you uh, in here in town in 2024. But for now, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.